I am gay. For literally years now, Jehovah's Witnesses have been hyping up that they are going to be making the definitive Jesus movie. There's many formats out there in the world of Jesus' life and how it's depicted, but our film is so accurate. The research and effort that's gone into it has made it so close to the Bible. It's going to make such a difference. They're going to see Jesus, what he was truly like. It's going to affect hearts and it's really going to help them to see Jehovah as well. This is a world that you've never seen before. The governing body is pleased to announce that a very special video series about Jesus is currently being developed. It is so definitive that it is called The Good News According to Jesus. A bit of a cutesy provocative title because obviously the naming convention of the Gospels are The Good News According to, or The Gospel According to, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so Jehovah's Witness is saying, hey, this is The Good News According to Jesus. It's like, well, we're going to cut out the middleman. No more of this Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John bull nonsense. And Jehovah's Witnesses alone are capable of producing The Good News According to Jesus himself because they are the only organization, the only religion on earth that has been directly chosen by Jesus. And by directly, I mean pretty indirectly through an invisible process that none of us are allowed to see or double check. But anyway, that's why they think they have the truth, is they think they were appointed by Jesus and their leadership's appointed by Jesus. So who better to create the definitive Jesus Christ film? Anyone is the answer. Anyone would have been better at making this movie. Jesus. My wife and I both watched it together, and we're going to record our commentary because we did that last year with the drama that Jehovah's Witnesses released. That's what they call movies, by the way. Dramas. Because everything has to have a slightly different name and be a little bit off. And perhaps because of that very fact, Christina and I had basically nothing to say the entire time. We were just astonishingly bored, and that's really my takeaway. This is an offensively boring movie. Now, the word offensive gets thrown around a lot these days, but I think this is, in quite a religious sense, offensive. There was born to you in David's city a savior who is Christ. Suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army, praising God. Glory in the highest above to God, and on earth, peace among men of goodwill. This is one of those cases where the existence of the film is way more interesting than anything in the film itself, because it is the result of hubris. Will there be challenges? Oh yeah, guaranteed, but if Jehovah wants something done, that's what happens. It is the result of a group of people who feel that they have been divinely chosen by Jesus Christ, thinking that they know how to make a movie. And the history of Jehovah's Witnesses has uh, shown pretty conclusively that they do not. Yes, they know how to like film and edit and stuff, but they don't know how to capture genuine human emotion because genuine human emotion is not allowed in a cult or high control group. So of course, a story that endured because essentially a man was just so nice that it made a really big impact on a community and the story of its spread is reduced to really still to dialogue and terrible performances in terrible writing. Jehovah's angel appeared to him, standing at the right side of the incense altar. But Zechariah became troubled at the sight, and he was overcome with fear. The acting performances are reflective of the fact that everybody involved with the production is involved in a group where they are not allowed to really express their true emotions or true selves at any given time. How is this to be? Since... I'm not having sexual relations with a man. In concept, it's quite ambitious in scope. The entire gospel account all amalgamated into one thing, if that's even a real word, amalgamated. The good news according to Jesus, however, will show all the events of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the order in which they happened, and in as much of the rich detail as current research and Bible understanding will allow. Because John 1 is something of a Genesis account for Christians, it also goes back to the Garden of Eden, and we see the iconic fruit story. And here's the thing, I don't really have anything to say about this movie, because it's very boring. No, what I want to talk about is something that I've wanted to talk about on this channel for a long time, which is a very pedantic and nitpicky point that Jehovah's Witnesses love to make, which is that the Bible doesn't technically say that it's an apple, guys. 
It just says that it's a fruit. And so every time Jehovah's Witnesses depict the Garden of Eden scene, they depict it with something that is not an apple, because that is indicative of worldly Christendom influence. Instead, it's like a pear or a lumpy magic fruit that doesn't exist anymore, or whatever this jalapeno-looking thing is that Eve gets in the movie. Love this about Watchtower. It's sort of a nature versus nurture thing. I'm a pedantic and nitpicky person, hence the existence of this video and this channel. But I don't really know if I was born this way or my nitpicky pedantic religion made me this way. But either way, here we are talking about what shape the fruit was that Eve picked in the Garden of Eden. And I'm talking about this because it's the only reason why this movie exists. Watchtower has very nitpicky pedantic things that they don't like about Christendom and their translations of the Bible and their popular depictions of biblical accounts. So this is an excuse for Watchtower to exploit their endless supply of free labor to create the most pedantic and unfun movie about Jesus ever made. But then there also are those who do the research just to make sure little details are correct, whether it be the shoes a person has on or whether he even wears shoes. They depict the creation of the universe in this movie, which sounds ambitious, but it, it's not actually, because in practice it's just watching a bunch of stock footage uh, that they bought from Adobe Stock or whoever. They show the original sin, Satan talking to Eve. What an interesting thing for a filmmaker to try and depict. I mean, do you make the snake talk? Obviously you kind of have to make it talk because it talked in the Bible, but what does Satan sound like? Does the snake's mouth move? These questions are concerning to Watchtower because they obviously reveal the Genesis account to be a little bit silly and maybe not something to be taken literally. So what do they do? Nothing interesting. They just show a snake statically staring at the camera. And I have to imagine that they just bought this too, because I mean, what, do you think Watchtower really got a snake and got it to look at the camera? I don't know, I don't think so. I guess the implication is that Satan via the snake communicated psychically with Eve, like it didn't move its mouth or talk out loud. It just all happened in her head, but they don't even do anything to articulate that visually. They don't do some kind of warbly psychic effect. It's just a static shot of the snake and then she takes the jalapeno and quietly walks off and gives it to Adam. As I've been editing this video, I'm actually jumping back in here because I've realized why this scene with the snake doesn't work. Eve and the snake are never in the same shot. They just cut to Eve, to a snake, and then the back to Eve, but we never have any sense of where the snake even is. Like, is it even there? Is this just, is she imagining a snake? Was the devil inside her all along? This is why the story worked better when you're just reading it or looking at a static picture where your imagination can fill in all the gaps. But what they definitely damn well made sure to do was make clear to these ignorant masses that it was not a f***ing apple in the Genesis account. It just says it's a fruit. So check this out. It's a magic fruit you've never even seen before. So we'll have to do some research into John chapter 6 and see where is a good break for us to realize what words were actually said there in the synagogue. That's the challenge. This is what the movie is. Jehovah's Witnesses are insistent that the Trinity doesn't exist, so naturally they prefer their own translation of the Bible, which was done exclusively by Jehovah's Witnesses, by the way, where in John 1, 1, it does not say that the word was God, because that sounds Trinity-ish, but it says the word was a God. And like, eh. Satan's a god. He's the god of this system. Jesus was just a god. Polytheist Jehovah's Witnesses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a god. So that's why this creation scene exists, so that they can get their own pedantic, nitpicky, different interpretation of John 1-1. If you want to see a Jesus movie where there's pathos and great performances and Jesus is portrayed as somebody who's capable of expressing a wide range of human emotions, you can get that in Satan's world. What you can't get in Satan's world is people just literally reciting the New World Translation slash the greatest man book word for word at you on camera. They both were righteous before God. 
walking blamelessly in accord with all the commandments and legal requirements of Jehovah. So that's why the movie is boring. It's not focused on being interesting. It's focused on being correct, technically correct, the best kind of correct. It's going to bring the ministry of Jesus Christ to life in an incredibly realistic way. Up to date, the largest feature drama audio video services had produced was a little over 100 minutes in length. The good news, according to Jesus, spans nearly 1,000 minutes of content. It reminds me of fan films, like that Spider-Man movie that came out recently. Sometimes fans will get upset about Disney Star Wars or Disney Marvel, and the real fan will make a real story that's really accurate to the comics, and they'll raise a bunch of money and make a fan film. And guess what always happens? It's kind of terrible. Usually the special effects are pretty impressive because if you know what you're doing and have a nice computer, you can do a lot of stuff. But you can't fake good writing or good acting or knowing how a story works. It also just betrays that acting is a craft. You can't just tell people to act good in a movie. There are real actors who study for years to get really good at acting, and those kinds of actors probably don't want to be in your weird Jehovah's Witness movie. I resolved also. And yet this isn't some church community theater production with a bunch of costumes like Witnesses used to do. No, this is a multi-million dollar production that was made with free, exploited labor. I'm going to assume that these guys aren't working union hours. We're a small department and it's a small branch that we're at. And all of a sudden we had this project highlighted that was three times our normal workload. The brothers and sisters, they've shown amazing skill and they've worked through some very challenging conditions. We've had heat, we've had rain, it's been dusty out here, it's been muddy at times, but they've worked through all of it. Honestly, based on some of the behind the scenes stuff they've released, it kind of seems like God didn't want this movie to come out. As we've been working with the Good News According to Jesus project, we run into a few challenges to say the least. Right from the start, we had fires, we've had floods, We've had a pandemic. Due to a number of restrictions that were taking place at the time, things were delayed. There even came a point where it just completely stopped. The organization has been pumping out these videos lately showing little old ladies with a walker and poor refugees in Africa somewhere painting a donation box for JW.org, just doing everything in their power to siphon money off of the poor and unfortunate. And to do what? to make a movie where finally Eve gets to grab a jalapeno instead of an apple. So it's not just boring, it's offensively boring. And that's why I didn't really put a lot of effort into this video, because they didn't put a lot of effort into their video, and I don't want to enable them. I do have a lot to say about their shift towards Jesus lately though, and so that's going to be probably what the next video is about. Why are they focusing on Jesus and being more Jesus forward? I have a theory. You'll never guess what it's about unless you guessed money, in which case you guessed correctly. But that's a little teaser. Thanks for watching and thanks to my patrons. I've been trying to figure out something more fun to do than just making credits roll on the screen, but I haven't really nailed it yet. So here's just the credits. And I don't know, probably some goofy nonsense that I'll throw after the credits uh, as a little incentive to watch the video. So you make a decision about what to depict. Uh, but then there are details when it comes to not just telling it, not just reading what happened, but now now that you have to show... Holy shit. shit.